Hello again, uh, we've been doing solving linear equations, we've looked at some uh, some cool stuff so far, for example we looked at Sam Dobb, okay, Sam Dobb was the way, uh, um, was the strategy we looked at solving linear equations where there's a bunch of operations in that equation. So we start with getting rid of our subtraction and addition terms, so terms, um, that doesn't contain an x, we try and get rid of them, then we uh, get rid of the factors, in other words what's being multiplied and divided, if there was any exponents, that's what this one represents, the power of, whether it's fractional exponents, which is uh, actually roots, and then finally if the x is, or the unknown is inside a bracket, then only th that would be the last thing I do, and once I go inside the bracket then I start over again. Okay, so that was the idea. However, sometimes what we get, and this is actually quite often, we might get where we have two uh, sides and both sides contains unknowns. And now the question is, whoa, how does this work? Okay, how do I actually actually solve this? Well, the main idea is to get get x's on one side and constants constant so that's actually x not x's x terms get x terms on the one side and constant terms on the other side. It doesn't matter which side you choose for your x's and constants, usually people choose the side that should have the x's as the one that already has the most. Okay, so for example in this example there's five x's on the right hand side, so it just makes sense to make to get rid of this term on this side and take it to that side. Okay, but I'll show you that how we do that in just a moment. Okay, um, this should be on the other, on the other side. Okay, so let's go and see how would we do that for this specific example. So I've got x, 2x minus 1 is equal to 5x plus 1. How would I do it for this one? Well, again, uh, it's just a, a simple um, advice to just choose the side with the most x's and you'll see in a minute just why I say that. We are trying to get rid of negative 2x on the right hand side and um, because we want this side to have our constant terms because we've chosen the right hand side to have our x terms. How do I get rid of a, of a 2x term? Well, it's actually quite easy. You take 2x and you subtract 2x okay, from it. So what did I do on the left hand side? I subtracted 2x. So on the right hand side, um, I'm just going to leave a little bit more space. I have 5x, but since I subtracted 2x's from the left hand side, I should subtract 2x's from the right hand side. So imagine I had my two scales here that's in balance and I've got two unknown weights. I'll make the unknown weights in in green. I've got two unknown weights on this side. Okay. I've got five unknown weights on this side. They're all the same weights. Okay, same same weight, but they're unknown. We don't know how much they are. And uh, then on this side we have a minus one. So I don't know how to represent that other than just having a minus one. It doesn't mean subtract one of the weights, it just means subtract one kilogram or whatever weight measure you're using. On this side we have a plus, plus one. Okay, so if I wanted to, to, to make sure that only one of the sides have weights, it just makes sense to, to get rid of the side, to get rid of the weights um, that are the least. Okay, so if I take two weights away from this side, okay, then I'm going to be off balance. I also should take away two weights on that side. So can you see why we choose the one with the highest positive number? Okay, it just makes sense because it leaves me with a positive number in the end. So 
here I now have 3x because I've got 5x minus 2, five, 3 unknown weights and originally I had a constant plus 1 term here but I don't want the constant terms on the left hand side so I'm going to subtract it from this side now on since I'm subtracting it from the right hand side I should also do it on the left hand side but I already had a negative 1 on the left hand side now I'm just having another negative 1 okay so let me do that all in this step so I've got a negative 1 so here you can see what it looks like it looks like I took this term to the other side and it became a negative 2. That's what it looks like. It's not really what happens, it's just what it looks like. And it looks like I took this positive 1 I, to the other side and now it becomes a negative 1. Okay, it's not really what happened. What actually happened is I subtracted it on both sides. It just cancelled on this side and, and it's now on the other side. So I end up having now negative 2 is equal to 3x. Okay, the weights example does fail at this point because what is negative 2? Anyways, I'm trying to get x on its own. To do that, I should divide with a 3 because 3 is multiplying the x. I should divide with a 3 on this side as well. When it cancels on this side, I've got left x is equal to negative 2 over three or I can write it in this direction x is equal to negative two over three because there's no difference okay it's the same thing and there I go I've got my answer so what did I do well all I did was to choose a side take make uh, got rid of the side that I didn't want x's got rid of any terms that did have x's and um, added them to the other side and on the, the side that the x's go, I got rid of all the constant terms and added it on the other side. Okay, so one more thing. What if we had something a little bit more challenging? Like, yeah. you can see it's it's a little bit more difficult okay and the reason why it's a little bit more difficult is because of these brackets here now now my unknown is inside a bracket and we know we can't touch brackets yet um, so unless we first simplify okay why not just make it easier for ourselves let's just simplify first how do we simplify well multiply in okay so just do normal maths 2x minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 3x plus 12 minus 3 all I did was to distribute this which we've done more than enough of at this point and now I simplify negative 2 plus 4 gives me 2x plus 2 is equal to 3x plus 12 minus 3 is 9 and here you see we've got the same idea again we've got x's on the one side we're going to choose the right hand side again those there's more x's so we're going to subtract from this side two x's and subtract from this side two x's so that leaves me with three x's on well, on this side, I've got nothing, no x's left. On the right-hand side, I've got 1x left, 3x minus 2. On the right-hand side, I don't want constants anymore. I've got a positive 9, so I'm going to subtract it from the right-hand side, and I'm also going to subtract it from the left-hand side so that I keep my balance. On the right-hand side, I'll have no more constant terms left because that was the idea. And on the left-hand side, I had a 2. I'm subtracting 9 which means I now have negative 7. And that is my final answer. x is equal to negative 7. If x is equal to negative 7 and I substitute it in here, you'll actually see the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Let's test that. Always a good idea to test your answer and that's the wonderful thing about maths. You can know whether you were right or wrong. You can mark your own work. That's brilliant, don't you think? So let's replace x with negative 7. 
negative 7 would give me 2 times negative 7, negative 1 plus 4. This is the left hand side. Let's do that first. Negative 7, remember bod mass, we do what's in the bracket first. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. So the bracket is negative 8. The bracket is being multiplied by 2, so that means this whole thing is negative 16 plus 4 equals 12. So this left hand side is equal to 12. Is the right hand side equal to 12 as well? Let's do that in a different color so we don't get confused. Okay, 3 times negative 7 plus 4 minus 3. So x is equal to negative 7, so we replace it with a negative 7. Negative 7 plus 4 is equal to negative 3. So the bracket will simplify to negative 3. But the bracket is being multiplied with a 3, so 3 negative 3s gives me, so this whole thing would be negative 9. Okay. Oh, I made a mistake here. It's not, it's negative 12 because it's negative 16 plus 4. Uh, thank you for correcting me. Okay, so we've got negative 9, negative 3 is equal to negative 12. And there we see, oh, our left hand side is equal to our right hand side. If you choose any other value for x, that will not be the case. The only value that will work is x equal to negative 7. Well, thank you for watching this video. Uh, that's it for uh, simplifying uh, equations linear equations for that matter, and maybe a few more example videos to follow. Let's see how you do. Good luck.